Hi everyone, Kaylin Jutris here. You are in the Herbal Skin Solutions treatment room. I have my lovely client, Miss Susan, here. We are just going through her client consent, and I'm going to show you the way that I like to perform my treatments today. Now, each provider does things a little bit differently here, um, but there is a method to the madness, and I have perfected the way I do this microneedling treatment. So you're more than welcome to take what you'd like out of this and make it your own. So when I start the treatment, we always go through informed consent. You can begin your informed consent by explaining to the patient the risks, the benefits. Now, Ms. Susan is on her third microneedling treatment. We have also done a series of peels with microneedling four weeks out after the treatment. So she's very well versed with this. She goes through her pre-treatment instructions, which you guys should all have in your workbook. Every time that she gets the treatment done, she knows to stay hydrated with plenty of water. She drank her lipospheric vitamin C. Uh, yes, Susan has signed the informed mm -hmm. consent saying that she is not on Accutane. She obviously does not have any open cuts, wounds, or abrasions. She is not pregnant or breastfeeding because obviously we are unable to work on anyone that is pregnant. And she has no current skin infections, herpes, breakouts, or active bacterial infections. So we are going to turn to the second page here. And we do this during each appointment. Susan's going to just circle the areas of concern here. Susan, like many of my other clients, scribbled all over her face diagram, meaning that she wants the entire face and neck treated which we are definitely going to do today. I generally include the face and neck in all treatments. However, I give them the face diagram so that I can find out which areas are of specific concern. This helps me pick out the best needle cartridge possible. Now, I know that Susan is very concerned about the orbital area. The nano cartridge is the only needle cartridge that is safe to use up to the lash line on the lower and upper lid, so we are most definitely going to incorporate the nano into today's treatment. The nano helps with hooded lids, under eye fine lines, wrinkles, and pigmentation, and it helps us to penetrate product which will help plump the skin and drive nutrients. She is looking for more plump to her skin we need to add collagen and elasticity. The 12 tip needle is most popular for the majority of skin concerns. However, with aging clients, more collagen is needed. The 36 tip needle has more needles in the cartridge, so that will create more of a controlled injury and lead to even better of a repair response and more collagen being sent to the trauma site. So for today's treatment, we are going to use the 36 tipped cartridge. Now, since you see the change in the skin so gradually, and it takes between two and three weeks for your fibroblast cells, your collagen producers to be fully activated and just really start to show the result. And it can take between two weeks up to two years to see the full um, pigmentation result. So, it's very important, of course, to track photos of the client's results. You can see here we've started with Susan's before photos. I'm just going to take the second round. They're looking forward, perfect. Beautiful. All right, so we have applied the all natural Zenza numbing cream and I've already rinsed and prepped the skin here. I'm just going to go ahead and lay you back. Mm. Are you feeling comfortable? Do you oh, need yeah. another blanket? No, I'm totally fine. Okay, great. Now, this is Susan's first treatment with numbing cream. Before, I would never use a numbing cream and I would never recommend most numbing creams. We were using a BLT cream um, at one point years ago in the office I worked at and we figured out that is, it is a vasoconstrictor. Most numbing creams are vasoconstrictors, meaning that they limit the amount of blood flow. So with the Zinza numbing cream, it is made of all natural ingredients 
and it does not constrict um, blood vessel dilation. Using the CIT pin protective sleeve, this is just to protect against cross contamination and keep your device like new. So you're just going to want to cut the tip off so the needles can slide through and insert your CIT pen. You can easily change the depth and the speed with the case. And this will just help to preserve the life of your device. When working on a medical depth, it is possible to get some backsplash from the body fluids. So it's nice to have an extra form of barrier protection there. Now I have already cleansed Susan with the Herbal Skin Solutions Cleanser and Toner. She should be feeling nice and numb. She drank her lipospheric vitamin C for optimal cell function, even though it didn't taste very good. You doing all right? I am. Now the forehead is always the most uncomfortable area, so I like to do both motions, cross-link pattern and circular, and ask the client if one feels better than the other. Do either make a difference to you? I don't think so. You might need to do it again for me to be aware. All right, let's see here. Now, when you're working around the eyes, you want to feel for the orbital bone. I'm not going to work below, and I'm not going to work above it, but what you can do, and this is with the 12 and the 36 tip needle, you do not want to work directly over the eye. However, you can go directly over the brows to stimulate hair regrowth. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, am I going to grow a mustache if I microneedle over my lip. That peach fuzz that grows there. No, not at all. This is only where you have a larger hair follicle, like the brow or the hairline. Now, if you do have facial hair that is of a larger follicle, the same size as your brows or hairline, then you may possibly stimulate hair regrowth there. And that area should be avoided. So what you can do here, since you cannot work over the eye, you can pull that skin up to the orbital bone and work with the invasive needles there. And the same goes for the bottom. I'm going to use my stick to pull the skin top. And I'm only working on the orbital bone. Now I'm going to go back in with the nano needle to work all the way up to the lash line, but for now, since I want to really focus in on the eye area she mentioned, I'm going to take the skin that's right under the eye and I'm going to pull it down as far as I can with my little stick. Feel for the orbital bone here. You doing okay, Susan? I really am. Mm -hmm. and you all I'm holding the pen very lightly as if it were a pen that I'm writing with you grip it as light as a pen that you're writing on paper the pen does all of the work for you you do not need to add much pressure at all other than holding it firmly
Okay, so we have all manipulated our face in the mirror. What happens when you pull behind the ears? Well, the front of the neck tightens. It looks great. The same thing happens when you microneedle there. Microneedling in front of and behind the ears is extremely helpful in tightening the skin in the front of the face and the front of the neck. Of course, we will work over the neck as well. However, this is a really helpful trick in tightening the skin. Throughout the CIT treatment, you may have to manipulate your client's skin, especially when working on and around the neck. It's easiest if you ask your client to turn the opposite direction of where you need to work so that the skin can tighten and you will not have to pull with the other hand. When you're working on the front of the neck, it's best to ask the client to pull their head up to the sky. Another wonderful technique in tightening the front of the neck is to sit your client up and work on the back of the neck. Switch to the nano needle now so we can work up to the lash line on the lower and upper lid. Now when you're working on the lash line, if you do decide to use the serum, be very, very careful and only use a teeny tiny bit. This is just so you do not get it in their eye. And it's nice to have a box of tissues nearby just in case. Um, you can also use sterile saline. So I'm going to turn the depth back down to 0.25. I'm at the bare minimum depth and the pressure that I'm going to use is as light as a feather. You can use the enhancement serum for this, just please be sure not to use, not to get it in the eye and to only use a very light amount so it does not run in the eye. You want to pull the skin top and very lightly going over it. I'm just going to do the same to this side. Susan. I feel great. We are going to make sure Susan has everything she needs to go home with and take proper post care of her freshly treated skin. We are sending her home with post care instructions, which most importantly outline no direct sunlight exposure or working out. It's very similar to post chemical peel rules. You do not want to elevate your internal core temperature immediately following treatment so you avoid post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's a bit strange for an esthetician not to be applying sunscreen post-treatment. However, sunscreen has proven to cause granulomas in the skin. We all know that this so. treatment works on a cellular level. So providing your body with all the nutritional and internal support is just going to give you quicker and better benefits.
this for you, my dear. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. So am I all set? I'm good to go. You are all set. Following treatment, you are going to want to make sure that you dispose of your disposable needle cartridges properly. They belong in a sharps container for disposal. You can either apply for a biomedical waste or a biohazard waste permit with your state health department, or you can also have a transporter come and pick it up for you. After you apply for your biohazard license, you can also tape up your sharps container and take that to your local fire department or hospital to dispose of everything. So we're going to want to take off this old case, make sure that is thrown away properly, and clean this with an OSHA approved sterilizer. I prefer to use barbicide wipes. And you're just going to want to clean your device, give it a nice wipe all the way around. I like to take Q-tips to clean the inside of the grooves. I will fold the barbicide wipe over like so, take a Q-tip and make sure I clean the inside. Very good. Whatever you do, folks, please do not wash your CIT pin with soap and water. It has happened and it will damage your device. Please make sure that you are only using wipes to sterilize your device. After you've cleaned that, you can go ahead and place it in your UV sterilizer. Two minutes will do the trick. Now, whatever you do, a UV sterilizer is just great, but an autoclave will heat up the device and it will melt. So please avoid heat autoclaves and only use a UV sterilizer. After two minutes, your CIT pen is dried from the barbicide wipes and it is ready to be stored back in your protective case. I like to keep mine in its bubble wrap container and store it in a cool dry place for safety. If you take care of your device and clean it after every treatment, this will last you a very long time. I hope you all enjoyed today's demo. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Thank you. To recap today's treatment, I'd just like to give you a few valuable pieces of advice that have really helped me. One, always check on your client throughout the treatment. Make sure that they're comfortable with the motions that you are doing. It's nice to give them the option of what is most comfortable for them. If they're uncomfortable during the treatment, they may not want to come back a second time. Number two, your grip is very important. When working over the eyes with the nano needle, your grip should be as light as a feather, just holding the pin in place. When you're working with the 12 and the 36 tip needles or the nano across the entire face or anywhere on the body, you'll want to grip the pin like a pin and use the same amount of pressure as if you are writing. The pen will do all the work for you. You do not have to apply much added pressure. My third most valuable piece of advice is going to be using your CIT pen protective sleeves. These will help prevent backsplash and prolong the longevity of the device. Think about it. If you're applying serum throughout the treatment and your hands are getting slippery and you're touching the pen or regardless of what product you're using, that will dry and encrust on the device. Some providers use PRP, others use bone marrow, all of different substances. Even though you're cleaning the pen afterwards, you're still adding to the wear and tear of the device. Anyways, at the end of the day, it just makes it a much easier cleanup process as well as creating a healthier environment and longevity for your device.